Happy Tuesday, everybody. It is a Tuesday, which means we have another full out chat getting ready for you. Super excited for our guest today. A couple weeks, no, actually last week, sorry, last week I had this person on my Coach's Corner episode, Lori Harris executive director at USA Cheer. We got to speak to her about stunt, which we will get back into a little bit here today later uh, in her chat. But now I have Lori uh, being a guest here on Full Out Chats to hear her story, to talk about how does she get into cheerleading? What is her background? Where is she from? All that good stuff. So I am super excited to talk to Lori here today, um, here on Full Out Chats. I think it's going to be awesome. I, again, I cannot wait uh, to speak with her. So before we can go full out, as every coach says, let's just do it one more time. Let's go full out. Are you ready? Full Out Chats. Do you know what time it is? Ooh, there it is. The music means we are full out. And let me invite Lori to join me and to have our chat. Lori. Hi. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good, good. Well, thank you again for joining me today. Uh, twice in one week. I'm not complaining, though. That'll be great. <laughs> Lots going on in cheer right now. So I know, I know, I know. But uh, as I was telling everybody, you know, last week I had you on our Coach's Corner episode. And that was awesome to talk about stunt. And uh, we'll get back into that a little bit later about, you know, that's obviously a part of your journey. But uh, the exciting thing is, you know, uh, being the executive director of USA Cheer, I I think people know of you. They've probably seen you at competitions and seen before, and uh, they've seen you around. But what's the story? You're like, how did how did Lori become Louie? Like, and when, where, how did this all happen? How did you get into cheerleading? And uh, very excited to hear your story. And so, kind of like I ask every guest from the beginning, just start from the beginning. Like, where are you from? Where did you grow up? What other sports did you maybe play? And then eventually, how did you get in this crazy world we call cheerleading? Yeah, well, thanks first for having me. It's like obviously great to have some filler time, right, during this yes. kind of quarantine yes. time to kind of learn about stuff. And it's a great opportunity for me to be able to, to share some of the experiences and most importantly, the people that I have um, really come to know and love and be able to kind of be part of this journey, which I never, mm -hmm. ever anticipated to be able to be doing this as a full-time job where I'm at now. So mm -hmm. um yeah, I was a high school cheerleader. Actually, in California, it's a little, I'm from California. Mm -hmm. And so it's a little bit different out here. And so you might be across the country and be, um, we had song leaders. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so there's only, it's kind of a California thing. So it's kind of like you're in between a dancer and a cheerleader, mm -hmm. like in between, like dancey cheer moves. So that was a song leader. Mm -hmm. And I uh, did that in high school. And then um, just for two years, and then I went to college mm -hmm. and had no aspirations at that point of cheering or anything. Mm -hmm. I went to um, Sac State, okay, and um, which is just an hour and a half from, from the Bay Area, from mm -hmm. where I grew up in, and was my first year. I again, the cheerleaders were not um, a strong program at Sac State mm -hmm. at the time, and so a friend of mine that I cheered with in high school, who also went to Sac State, we were there together we just kind of talked and she was like, well, come on, let, let's, let's just try out and we'll make it better and it'll be fun. And so we kind of like did it together and we ended up making it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's my friend Joy mm -hmm. um, and from high school and college. And so we, we made it. And again, it was also more of a dancey style, kind of mm -hmm. like that dance team kind of um, style there. We really had volunteer coaches and now not a lot of guidance when I first got there. So that's kind of like the, you know, transition of going from high school to college. And then throughout the, my college experience there at Sac State is we ended up halfway through being able to bring in kind of a more experienced coach uh, named Fred. And he came in and kind of really got the, the cheer program going. Um, I was still on the dance side at that point. 
so I kind of, my, my background is more dance. And um, so then we were able to, he came in and kind of started the, the cheer program. And then I actually switched over. They talked okay. me into switching over mm -hmm. to the cheer side. Um, we had a lot of guys at that point. A lot of them all worked for United Spirit Association, which yep. is out here in California. So they all kind of like worked together. So they all kind of were at Sac State, joined the team. And um, then we were able to, um, I, so they were just like, come on, come stunt, you know, I'll, I'll teach you. And so we kind of learned like really quickly and then just ended up being the captain that year and doing cheer for my last two years of college. So talk about the transition. Yeah. I mean, you know, when people think about, like you kind of said, you know, California cheerleading, I think, uh, one of the more popular ones is the USC song girls. You know, you, you think about that's kind of the California style of cheerleading, so, I mean, kind of talk about the transition from having your feet on the ground to not having your feet on the ground anymore. Yeah, I mean, it was super, it was really exciting, actually. It was just, you know, I probably didn't know, know any better at that time, but I was just like, yeah, throw me up here. Just, you know, um, I had great, great partners, Sherrick and Brody, and who just really, like, um, in particular, like, probably saw more in me than I did in myself and encouraged me and really were, you know, um, just helped me to just really enjoy all the partner stunning that I was able then to really kind of get into. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, so like I said, yeah, so I'm in college um, cheering. We did do a competition. This is back in the day when um, uh, UCA College Nationals was in San Diego okay. at SeaWorld mm -hmm. like forever ago. Mm -hmm. And it was the year that they decided to put on like a California event at the same time as like their college event. So we mm -hmm. went down and competed like with UCLA and um, a few other colleges that were more just for the California base. Mm -hmm. And that was the year that it totally poured rain and they had to move the whole event. San Diego, I think it was San Diego State. Mm -hmm. it, was, um, it was crazy, but it was super fun. And we had a great experience of competing um, at that level. Mm -hmm. Then kind of shortly after, you know, graduated from the, at that point and um, moved uh, just, you know, graduated and was just doing like a normal job and um that but i was during that time i was i was recruited by uca mm -hmm. okay. to work for summer camps at that mm -hmm. time uca wasn't really out in the west very much so they were obviously you know based in the south and really yep that's the good old yellow shirt days which, mm -hmm. if you're a staff member not many <laughs> people know about the yellow shirt days it was my favorite day because it was day three um, and I love yellow. So um, <laughs> that was fun. But they, um, so yeah, so we, I, they, they came up to Sac State and they re recruited um, a couple of us. Most of the staff at that point of my fellow cheerleaders were again, working for United Spirit mm -hmm. because that was like the local in-state kind of um, company. And not a, lot, not a lot of people knew about UC at that time. And, but um, actually my partner really encouraged me to like um, go and try out. Well, actually, they came to the Sac State, actually, and we were just stunned. They came to a football game. Mm -hmm. Then at the next day, we were just out on the grass, and they came and stunted around and then just said, do you want to come work? So it was kind of – we didn't really have tryouts back then. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so I was just in a really lucky uh, – I feel like so much of my journey has been, like, being in the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, yeah, that sounds great. Flew to Memphis a month later and was, you know, teaching camps across mm -hmm. the South, Baylor, you know, all those areas, and Tennessee Tech, and – then came back to California, and that's some of, I think, some pictures from my very first or second summer. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, had a blast. And, you know, again, just thinking this is going to be like a year or two summer job, yep. right? Like not going to be something that's really forever. And, but then, again, right place at the right time. At, the, at that time, UCA was, was really looking to expand into the West. And being that I was now a little bit older, I was graduating, I had graduated from college, and they were looking for people who could put some more full-time effort into getting, mm -hmm. you know, high school teams to get to summer camp. Mm -hmm. So they hired me uh, full-time to be like a Northern California state direct, uh, territory manager at the time. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, so I, I did that. And again, just thought, well, this is, you know, this is something cool to do for a short amount of time. And really focused on getting high school teams, um, in particular, into, into summer camp. And I was also coaching a um, high school team at that time in the, okay. along the coastal area, mm -hmm. past the World Bowls near Santa Barbara. So, uh, again, we're here with Lori Harris, Executive Director at USA Cheer. 
Uh, we're talking about uh, her first couple years here out of college. But while, while at, uh, in college, uh, what was your major? What did you study? And kind of what were you thinking you were going to do? Um, yeah, that's interesting. I was a communication major okay. with a minor in business. Mm -hmm. I originally went in as accounting major, communication minor, because I love like numbers and I love um, um, bookkeeping and so forth. Then I realized that's what I really liked mm -hmm. was bookkeeping and numbers, not really accounting. Uh -huh. I was like, oh, wow. I think I went through my three years of high school accounting in like the first semester at college. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, I don't think this is probably really the direction I want to go. Um, so I just switched it. Really loved communication. Just I did more of the organizational um, communi um, interpersonal communication part of it mm -hmm. and then still did the business minor and I just I think I thought at that time I would probably be I wanted to work in like a high-rise type run an HR department or you know be in like some sort of organization like organization like you know that sort of stuff mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so you you start working. What did you do actually? You said you had a real job, quote unquote, for a couple well, years. <laughs> well, actually, it was just about a year. I was just really okay. working for. I worked for like a CPA. Mm -hmm. um, had worked for um, just a few things like that. M mostly, my main was for a CPA, mm -hmm. and just worked for him. And again, was just kind of like thinking about doing something at that point. Mm -hmm. You know, that just learning um, administration type skills and kind mm -hmm. of feeling it out. And like I said, so then when I was offered this position to work, you know, from home. And mm -hmm. basically, I mean, I had my, you know, printed Excel document and highlighters and we just call teams and say, come to camp. Mm -hmm. And so that was, it was really fun. So you, you even said it, you know, you, you get this great opportunity again, kind of just right place, right time. You're the Northern California territory manager, but even you said, you're like, well, this will be good for a year or two. And then, yeah. Mm -hmm. So even then, you're still not thinking like cheer or spirit is going to be a living for you. No, no. I just kind of really thought it was something like part time. I mean, it, that would be temporary. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then um, I ended up expanding my territory, took on kind of the Oregon area mm -hmm. and kind of up the coast, you know, up that direction, work with some great people on the, the West Coast team. And then very quickly... Again, right place, right time. My boss was in Memphis, Chris Tolp, and she was decided that she was not going to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. And so she had kind of reached out and she's like, you know, the position became available. And I had, I had only like two or three years into my position. Mm -hmm. So I was like, that'd be super cool. Like when I get more experience, like yeah. I couldn't manage the whole West Coast. I didn't mm -hmm. think I really had um, what it you know, what I needed mm -hmm. to actually take that position. And, but then Bill Seeley actually reached out to me and he was like, you need to apply. And I was like, Oh, I, again, I just didn't feel like I said, yeah, I, mean, I just don't feel like I'm ready for that. Mm -hmm. And then I thought about it and I said, well, what the heck, why not apply? Mm -hmm. And so I did and I got the job. So I was definitely one of the younger, um, managers at mm -hmm. the time and again just being on the west coast where it was they were kind of that was their last frontier mm -hmm. to really expand so it definitely was um something that i just happened to be in the right place at the right time mm -hmm. and so i was really excited about the opportunity to then manage the whole west coast mm -hmm. at that point so t i mean talk about experience so were you able to stay out west or did you have to move to memphis nope that was okay. always part of the i was you know had no plan to move into memphis and mm -hmm. they actually um that was probably the, one of the benefits about hiring me out here is because they wanted somebody in the west okay mm -hmm. they wanted somebody out there who could mm -hmm. get to the territory um as quickly as possible and kind mm -hmm. of really understand what the landscape and what cheerleading looked like out here yep. in the west mm -hmm. and i mean kind of talk about kind of talk about that expansion you know you've been you know you've seen kind of the growth of UCA, but particularly the growth to really becoming not just a national brand, but a global brand, you know, uh, with UCA varsity. Kind of talk about your experience of seeing kind of that growth first to, to expand out West, but then obviously through USA Cheer, now you've seen it kind of grow globally also. Yeah, I mean, it was just really neat to be, again, part of an organization that was so forward thinking and really just you know, creating those experiences for young people to come to camp and then, you know, competitions and whether it's parades and just opportunities, trips overseas. I mean, the, the amount of things that I have been involved in because of cheer are unbelievable. Mm 
Mm -hmm. I mean, they're literally unbelievable. So it is something that was really neat to see the progression of, you know, our company was always at the time and even now still like always just looking ahead and always mm -hmm. looking at not just trying to keep up with the market, but to be the trendsetter mm -hmm. in the market and to really put student experiences first, mm -hmm. bringing student, you know, spirit to campuses and um, just making sure that that was always at the forefront of really, you know, elevating school spirit um, across the country mm -hmm. and, and in every way possible. Mm -hmm. And to be able to do that in so many different initiatives and so many different ways was um, thrilling to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, again, we're here with Lori Harris, Executive Director at USA Cheer. So when you're, you're, you've, you've been involved now with kind of the growth of, of UCA, kind of, but really starting with, you know, growing out the West. You really wanted the West to, to grow. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm going to so this is before the merger, correct? This is where, mm -hmm. okay, so... So kind of talk about, you were there, you know, I mean, a lot of people don't, I mean, it's been a while now since the mm -hmm. merger happened. Like the UCA-NCA rivalry was a, a healthy rivalry is what I'll say. And so, and, you know, at the time, I, you know, the, the West Coast definitely had, as you said, kind of had its own style. It, it definitely was different from the traditional UCA style. Uh, kind of talk about possibly, you know, the, I guess the challenges you had of really selling this totally different style this totally different brand uh, to the west coast yeah it was actually um i felt it actually kind of a little it was kind of easy because mm -hmm. it was new right everyone wants to try something new and different mm -hmm. um we didn't really have nca as much in the west mm -hmm. we, really our west company at the time that was a competitor was united spirit association yep. mm -hmm. so that was kind of unique and different um they were out in the West, but not nearly as prominent mm -hmm. as United Spirit was. So that was something that they were kind of more at the time, our main co competitor. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to, um, you know, just really for me, it was br being able to, to bring in something new and different, mm -hmm. which is always kind of easy on the front end. And mm -hmm. then we just worked so hard at that point to just have just a top notch, you know, camp experience that the, the high school teams would, would want to come back. Mm -hmm. And we really, really, the thing that really stood out was that we hired just literally the best people. Mm -hmm. The staff was just amazing. Mm -hmm. And so that really helped, you know, elevate UCA at the time, but before everyone merged together to really kind of like grow really quickly and to really, they put a lot of uh, resources into, into their people. Mm -hmm. on the ground. And so that was something that I was able to take advantage of as well. So before you kind of know it, you're, how long were you in the position of, uh, that you are now in, in terms of basically running the West coast? I mean, I worked for varsity for 25 years. Okay. So, so before you know it, even without thinking you're doing this as a living. <laughs> yeah. I, I very quickly realized that like, you know, as this is, a, is this full time? I love it. Uh -huh. a lot, it was a lot of travel and a lot of things. Um, for me, I'm like an all in person. So like I immediately went, tried to get to like every state, which I, which I had like 10 states. So it's kind of a um, large geographic area, you know, mm -hmm. so it was like really far and spread apart. And so I was like really trying to get to every event that I could just to really understand every di different type of cheer team across the West in particular. Mm -hmm. And so I spent a lot of time traveling, a lot of time out and about being at all the events, just really understanding everything that, you know, cheerleading is not just in the West, but across the country as well. Mm -hmm. And so I just kind of kept thinking, well, I'm going to keep doing this as long as it works, mm -hmm. you know, and then I started having kids and then I was like, well, okay. After my first, um, when my first daughter was born, I was like, well, maybe I'll go part time. Maybe mm -hmm. I'll quit. Maybe I'll stay home. And I remember talking to Celie and just saying, yeah, I don't know. And he's like, well, you know, don't make a decision right now. You can see how it goes. And mm -hmm. so it just like kept working. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, this is great. Um, and then, my second daughter, Jordan. And then again, I was like, well, maybe I'll go part-time. Maybe mm -hmm. I'll stay home. And I just, it just kept working. Yeah. And so I was like, this is that I love it. I love the people I work with. I love traveling. I loved, I mean, cheerleading is so positive and so much, you know, positive energy that I love being around it. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we're here with Lori Harris, Executive Director with USA Cheer. So while you're doing that, are you still involved with coaching at all? Are you still helping out anywhere? Or? Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, took, I was working for UCA, mm -hmm. and then from that, I was meeting all these great instructors, right, mm -hmm. on, on the West Coast. I was, I was responsible for hiring them at that mm -hmm. point. So I was hiring them and getting all these great instructors. And so a couple years after I graduated at Sac State, um, uh, there was a member of the cheer team. So the cheer team had kind of had a, a lot of co-ed presence. Then it kind of went really down again after mm -hmm. I left. So I think it was a, maybe a few years after I had left, probably four or so. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, had, I was working for UCA, and then there was a, a guy who was, at, she was cheering at Sex Day. His name's mm -hmm. Alex Mercado. And he was like, he was also working for UCA. And he was okay. like, hey, Louie, you got to, you got to come and coach sex day. We need to coach. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh my goodness, I don't have time for that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I was like, I don't have time for that. And um, so he's like, I swear, I swear, I'll help you recruit. And we'll, you know, it'll be awesome. And da, da, da. And so honestly, because of him, I'm like, well, okay. I didn't have kids at the time. And okay. so I was really like, okay, I, let's do this. Mm -hmm. And I had so many great instructors with um, UCA. I had this mm -hmm. great group of California in particular, but also on the West Coast of just everyone at that point, you know, there wasn't a ton of, there wasn't a really big, I think at all, co um, co-ed college on the West mm -hmm. Coast, uh, not in the West Coast, but in California in particular in Northern California. Mm -hmm. So at that time it was pretty easy to get into like kind of hard now to get into certain colleges just yeah. they're impacted back then it wasn't as difficult mm -hmm. so i was able to recruit that summer at you know kind of um reaching out to a lot of the instructors that i was working with mm -hmm. and really get them involved in thinking about cheering in college and mm -hmm. to be honest it was the best experience of probably my entire life um and it wasn't coaching was so hard and it was a lot of work, but it was just the people I got to just um, be part of their life. Mm -hmm. And I'm all about just coaches having such a huge, huge impact on young people. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing. Yeah. So we were, and I was also really excited because I was the first coach to take them to college nationals in Orlando. <laughs> and we had a great, uh, a great showing. And I'm just proud to say that they've been attending uh, college nationals in Orlando ever since. I think mm -hmm. this is like their 19th or 20th year. I mean, talk, talk about that first experience as a coach going to nationals. Cause I, I, I mean, it's nerve wracking. All those coaches know that first team, that, that first team that has your name on it. Like you are the coach. It is your product, you know, and you know how much time and energy and effort those, those kids put in for those, hopefully, you know, two and a half to five minutes, depending mm -hmm. on what you're Talk about that experience of taking that first team down there. You know, it was, it was just so much fun. Um, but it's because of a few of, the, few of those guys right there are some of my closest friends to, like, today. I consider mm -hmm. them family. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was just for me that was just about bringing people together, getting them into a place where they could get their education. And then they can also create, have an, an amazing experience in college of, representing being ambassador for the university mm -hmm. and then taking those skills that they love to do and being able to showcase it in a competitive environment mm -hmm. is just something that was again it's always easy to look back and think oh my gosh but at the time it just was thrilling it was mm -hmm. just fun they mm -hmm. had never most of them had never really even competed uh, maybe a couple at the high school level so we just had you know it was just a great group and it was very collaborative everybody really worked um to help make you know the program work mm -hmm. and it was it was it was fantastic so i did that for about a uh, total of five years okay um and then i transitioned i was transitioning in that five years to more of a the director role mm -hmm. so i brought in some additional help um because again i started having my girls and mm -hmm. so i i could only you know i was still traveling a ton with varsity uc at the time and so brought in some great um, coaches and then just was more of the director of the mm -hmm. program which was great because I love college athletics. Like mm -hmm. I love, I love college athletics so much. And I just think it's, I loved every part about it. I mean, the, the competition was just really more for the kids because they, like everyone needs something at the end to kind of work towards. But I love like game day and I love like the pep rallies and I love, you know, re representing the college. And I just loved all, like every part of that mm -hmm. was just something, you know, a lot of time and a lot of energy mm -hmm. but i spent um but it's also worth it so worth it so here with Lori harris executive director usa cheer i mean just real quick the nickname louie how'd you get it oh, where'd it come from <laughs> gotta gotta know 
Yeah, that's so funny. It's um, it's one hundred percent um college and cheer. Uh-huh. Yeah. So if you do not know me in college or cheer, then it's Lori. Yeah. Um, and it it's just so funny because it's literally like two different like groups of people who know me. <laughs> so, yeah. um, I literally I'll make it super short, but I was freshman, you know, in the dorms, uh-huh. and I had met this girl named Kathy uh, over the summer. Well. Her, I met her as Cleo mm-hmm. and prior to going to sex date, some friends mm-hmm. had introduced us and like, we were both going there. And so I ended up seeing her. She, I, when I was uh, like unpacking at my dorm room and I'm like, Oh my gosh, like I remember her. I had mm-hmm. met her and I, she was on my floor a few, a few uh, doors down. So I ran up and it said, Kathy. And I was like, Oh, that's weird. I thought her name was Cleo, uh-huh. you know? So, we get together later that, you know, the whole first week is all about, you know, your freshmen in the dorms. Yep. It's all the activities and all the fun stuff. And so we, um, there was like four of us girls and we were just hanging out, getting to know each other. And we're like, what's up with this, you know, name? She's like, oh, I just always wanted my name to be Cleo. What, you know, all that stuff. And I was like, yeah, I never had a nickname. And uh-huh. so we just all sat there. And we're like, hey, we're going to make up nicknames for each other. <laughs> but they had to start with the first letter of your name. Uh-huh. Okay. So, they ha- so it had to be L. And I'll never forget because we're standing. There's a dorm dance going on. Like on the, we're on the second level. Sounds like, so right college. Outside. I love it. I love so it. College. There's a dorm <laughs> dance going on. And back th- we were by the payphone. You know, we didn't have cell phones yep. back then. Mm-hmm. I'm dating myself right now. Mm-hmm. And um, I love to dance. Anyone who knows me, I uh-huh. love to dance. And so Louis, because I was more of the dancer before I became a cheerleader. Mm-hmm. And Louis, Louis came on. And so we were dancing, Louie, yep. Louie. And they're like, it's L, we'll call you Louie. And I'm like, sounds great. Yep. And then so the whole first week in the dorms, I went around and told everyone that was my name. Yeah. So then like the hard part was, is like then the next week on campus when classes started and I would see people, right? And they're yeah. like, oh, they remembered it because mm-hmm. it was odd. Yeah. Right. And then I was like, oh, no, well, actually, it's, it's, it was like kind of confusing to like explain it. Yeah. So then it just, it just took on a life of its own. So then I was like, <laughs> It's Louie. In fact, there's people who like got like two of my cheerleaders at one point. She's like gotten an argument with somebody because they're like, no, that's on her birth certificate. And yeah. like, <laughs> became very passionate about it. But yeah, so it's, it's funny because a lot of people um, have had a lot of incidences where people have didn't know me and yeah. then they thought I was a, a guy. <laughs> oh, and then well, they met me and they're like, oh, well, you're not. <laughs> oh, you're not. Not at all. Yeah. So we are here with Lori Louie Harris uh, of USA <laughs> Cheer. So you, um, you, you said you're with, you were with UCA Varsity for 25 years. Mm-hmm. Is that correct? And, yes. Um, so, I mean, talk about, you know, those, those years that you obviously have helped, you know, help grow that company and help with that company. Um, the merger happens. So mm-hmm. I guess, you know, I love asking some of these people that I really experienced it. You know, I got to talk to Bill Patterson. Who, yes. uh, before who was oh, on the NCA said, I love Bill. Great guy. Mm-hmm. His interview yeah. was awesome. He's, he's so funny. Um, but you know, I, I was, it was really cool to get his perspective of what happened. And cause I remember I was a super senior in college. I did a victory lap. That's fine. No big deal. No, and no. I remember <laughs> when the, the news came out, it was like, holy cow, no freaking yeah. way, you know? And so kind of talk about your experience with the merger of, you know, UCA and CA becoming one and kind of the experience of that. Yeah. You know, it, so it seems so long ago to yeah. me now because mm-hmm. it, it was actually a long time ago, mm-hmm. but it just is something that, um, yeah, at the time when you work so hard, right. As a, to compete against somebody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden it switches and you're like, Oh, so we're not competing anymore. Yeah. And yeah. it becomes this like, so yeah, there was a lot of like, okay, how do we like, you know, work through this? And it, you know, it definitely took a few years for mm-hmm. that to just really settle in. And, you know, the goal was never to have everybody be the same. I mean, we're yeah. all better because of our differences and mm-hmm. there's a lot of different things out there that people like. And so it was, um, the leadership was so thoughtful. I'm trying to really, you know, preserve like mm-hmm. each part of each company that was so unique and special. But at the same time, really leveraging the best practices mm-hmm. and some of the systems and some of that stuff that was, would really help to cheerleading to be able to really grow and further, mm-hmm. but keeping those unique things about each of the brands separate and making sure that we're meeting all the, the different needs in the different areas. And so that's a lot of work. And mm-hmm. that took a lot of people, 
great, you know, great leadership to be able to make that happen. Mm -hmm. So you're there 25 years and then what happens? What, what, what is the next step for, for Louie? Yeah, well, I was so thank I was so lucky to be involved in so many different initiatives mm -hmm. that um, Varsity had done. Uh, it's kind of just my nature to kind of get involved in, you know, I helped with our national youth program. I helped with um, the, the philanthropy stuff. I mm -hmm. helped with well, some of our IT stuff. I was able to just kind of help with lots of things in addition to my role. And so when Stunt came about, mm -hmm. I was definitely able to really, um, I was involved from the second year on. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I really focused on, in the West, again, mm -hmm. um, helping the colleges out here really get continue their season, and more importantly, the high school, you mm -hmm. know, high school, to really get that going. We also had the ability, uh, and we had, a, we had some challenges coming into California at the time where, again, the whole point of stunt is there was some legislation that was being introduced to make cheerleading a sport. Mm -hmm. And California being one of the largest, you know, um, populations in the whole country, it was really, really concerning. So I spent mm -hmm. many years kind of working through that legislation process and really making sure that we were careful to see how we could make sure that that didn't go down the wrong path. Mm -hmm. Because again, people don't realize when you, when you put it into a sport box, right? There's so many rules and regulations around yep. that. Mm -hmm. And so we really were, um, spent a lot of time on that mm -hmm. at the same time we were building stunt. And so that was a huge initiative that, um, I spent a lot of time with. So being able to be involved in so many different areas of the company and in cheerleading in the West, but also across the country, um, I think probably really paved the way for this next step of then transitioning over to USA Cheer. Mm -hmm. So talk about the that transition. You know, I, uh, I spoke with Jim Lord yesterday, which was great. And he talked about, you know, the involvement of USA Cheer and now, how USA Cheer is is it's is doing these great things for you know the overall spirit world and the international growth now and everything. I'm mean, talk about that that transition going from from really from varsity UCA to to being uh, USA Cheer. Yeah, I mean it was a huge change. Um, I totally you know met, like was like contemplating like leaving my team, which I just love so much. I loved the team on the West Coast in particular and, and all the the ladies and the guys I, get to, I got to work with across the country. But then it was kind of like, you know, 25 years is a long time and what's the next step? Mm -hmm. And when there was this need of, as I know Jim mentioned yesterday, uh, you know, really being able to expand kind of the base of USA Cheer and mm -hmm. really be able to help, you know, further safety, further more educational opportunities for coaches and safety in particular. The national team has been just, in, you know, they're just a powerhouse around the world and being able to help, you know, that as we are now even competing more around mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, just needing, needing more eyes on that and more assistance in that area. And so to be able to take all my experience with cheerleading and then to, to you know, move that over to a more organizational type direction um, was kind of like, I mean, honestly, a dream come true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, again, we're here with Lori Harris, uh, USA Cheer Executive Director. Now, you, one of the awesome things, first of all, you were one of the most prepared guests I've ever had. All the information <laughs> you sent me was awesome, so thank you. And some of these pictures you sent me were great, so I want to make sure we get through most of oh, these gosh. if we can. But, you know, uh, I, I've already talked to, literally, you are, uh, you know, I've talked to uh, Jomo, I've talked to Tony Nash, I've talked to Leroy, and now I've talked to you. Talk about the Olympics, having the opportunity to go to Pyeongchang, South Korea, my home country where I was born. Uh, I, was, I remember reaching oh. out. Oh, yes. Wow, I, I didn't I, know I, that. Yes, yes. That's People exciting. Don't know. Yes. yes, I was born in South Korea. My mother is South Korean. And, uh, Do you I, speak my, it? Uh, very little, enough to, get okay. me, enough to get me food and- We could be uh, used a, a couple more translators. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but uh, no, it, it's, it's a beautiful country. And, but I mean, it was huge news when they said that they were, they were going to bring over a U.S. cheer team to be a, a part of the demonstration and everything. Talk about that. Talk about going yeah. to the Winter Olympics and being a part of that whole thing. That was crazy because I had just started that fall. Uh -huh. And so it literally was like a month after yeah. I started. And, and Carl Olson from ICU was like, mm -hmm. hey, they are talking about bringing. And I was like, 
oh my goodness, mm -hmm. had a million things going on and we're trying to pull together like a team and you know, our national team is not together all year round. Yes. They are all over the place. Yep. And so we didn't really have an established team at the time that could mm -hmm. act, you know, act, pull something like that off. So of course we um, reached out and got the team at the time that was, you know, um, had, I think, I mean, they've, I don't know when, when they haven't won yeah. very often, but <laughs> University of Kentucky. And, yeah. you know, we were able to pull that, um, pull that together. It was a crazy trip and crazy mm -hmm. preparations because there was, it was kind of a lot of moving parts, but they had decided the organization in the, com in the country had decided to bring over the last and I'm probably gonna get this wrong. I should remember this, but the last mm -hmm. like five, let's just say five, mm -hmm. the last five, the top five countries, seven countries mm -hmm. in the, in the previous winter Olympics. Mm -hmm. So that's are the, those are the countries that they invited their cheer programs. Cool. Okay. So it was how they placed in medal count. Yeah. The previous okay. winter Olympics. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so, and they, um, paid for the majority of the, of the accommodations mm -hmm. um, to get over there. And we had some local sponsors that really helped us out as well, but mm -hmm. we literally, hit the ground like and the very next day we were at a pep rally mm -hmm. at the military base there and um it, it was crazy i mean mm -hmm. we, were on, we were on a bus for two and a half hours driving across the country performing yep. and it was it was awesome to start off that with a pep rally for the yeah. troops yeah and then every day mm -hmm. they were performing in literally snow and you know, these crazy circumstances were in the middle of a speed skating event. We're in the Olympic area. We performed at the closing ceremonies. Um, so many incredible things that, you know, just to be able to share and exhibit what cheerleading looks like. Mm -hmm. And also to add a lot of entertainment as well. Mm -hmm. uh, well, first, I was actually, um, I remember reaching out to uh, both uh, Jomo and Tony just saying, hey, man, enjoy it. Enjoy the country. <laughs> I literally was in South Korea like three months before the Winter Olympics started. And I was visiting okay. my family over there. My mom's whole family still over there. Oh, and wow. I, I got to actually see the buildings getting finished and yeah. got to drive through everything before the madness, and, which, was, which was beautiful and awesome. Um, I mean, what was kind of like one or two of the, the events you had to do that just stick out to your, in your mind and with that whole experience? Yeah, well, I mean, the speed skating thing was crazy because we were literally in the middle of the speed skating ice rink. Uh -huh. And just, um, it was kind of like we, we were waiting to perform. It was kind of quiet. And then as the speed skaters got closer to that mm -hmm. like final like lap, yeah. I mean, the place just erupted. Mm -hmm. And it was just so, I mean, it kind of gives me chills right now. Mm -hmm. It was just like, it was crazy awesome and then we were able to perform in the um in the olympic like they have like a uh and i'm gonna lose my train of thought here for the like a a, a medal mm -hmm. like so you get your some of them get their medals right there and yep. some of them you have they actually have their, like a medal ceremony location okay. mm -hmm. so we were we performed there a couple times mm -hmm. as well because the crowds are all gathering to then yep. you know get their their medals and that was really cool oh, okay. to be able to just perform there Mm -hmm. prior to these you know groups getting their athletes and then they just have festivals all over the city mm -hmm. they have like literally like they're on little side streets with like stores and they would have like a stage set up with like a big screen yeah. and showing the olympics so they mm -hmm. have like 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 a pop-up shop yeah right mm -hmm. so pop-up olympics all yep. over the place so that was really cool to like we and then we would go and perform yeah. to, like in ran random locations around mm -hmm. the country and um it was it was it was like it was an experience that we'll never forget. Uh, last question about it. How was the food for you over there? <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of Leroy's uh, answer also. <laughs> okay. You know, I'll just say that we, I'm sure that we did not experience the best that the, com that the country has to offer. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy told me about the box lunch story where, you know, they get the box lunch and they, everybody looked at it like, yeah and then i think he said you were like the savior and got like a bunch of pizzas or something and i was like i felt like i just went to total mom mode but i felt like that became my full-time job on the trip was like finding mcdonald's and pizza and fried yeah. chicken wherever yeah. we went i mean yeah. i have these which college... you can find in korea it's all over you can find oh, yeah. it but oh, yeah. yeah yeah well this yeah we were out waiting for one of our performances and this this, this little like motorcycle pulled up like beep beep and I had waited like an hour outside and I, so 
I have all these college, right? These college guys yeah. in particular, yep. like yep. they need food. Yeah. Uh, they're yep. athletes. Yep. And so I remember I got their order one time when we we're in the, in the Olympic Village and then I kept it. And then when we were at the competition that we performed in mm -hmm. or the performance, I had I already had their order. So I literally called it in and I doubled it. If they wanted this, I just doubled it. <laughs> and I waited outside for this little motorcycle to come, you know, like, I'm like, oh, there it is. They delivered it in this little motorcycle. And, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I, I don't really eat McDonald's unless it's out of the country. Yeah. I should have put you in contact with my family. They would have cooked you guys a feast, oh. like, real good. I should have done it. Sorry. Our last yeah. day, we were able to spend a full day in Seoul, and we uh -huh. had this wonderful meal. I mm -hmm. took them to a big buffet. Nice. And, you know, so mm -hmm. that was great. So, again, awesome. when you're feeding mass amount of people in those yes. environments, and yep. It's challenging. No, absolutely. Totally get it. Um, this picture right here. Oh, my that, goodness. Yes. And uh, talk about, uh, you know, this experience. Talk about what it is and kind of what it means to you. Yeah. So one of the things I've loved is philanthropy is really important to me uh, personally and professionally. And so I was able to, <clears throat> again, being on the West Coast, being in California, we have a lot of opportunities that because of the entertainment and the media part right out mm -hmm. here on the West Coast in California. So you say had been involved with MDA for, mm -hmm. you know, forever. And they would really take the college routine and then they would add some kind of West Coast people to it. And then they would perform it every year and give mm -hmm. like $50,000 and raise across the country. Mm -hmm. So I was able to begin being in California. I performed in it um, when I was a staff member. And then I was able to, Michelle Edwards had run that program for many years. And then mm -hmm. um, me being local and a manager, I was able to um, take that over and help with the, you know, just help run it and get, mm -hmm. get the staff there and, and run that. I was able to present the check one year, which is that one picture. And of course, you got to take the picture out by the Las Vegas sign. That's just mm -hmm. like a, that's like a must, you know, yep. any sort of, of that. And then again, yeah, I was able to, um, I was actually able to start the St. Jude program with varsity. Yep. So I was going to say that something that is huge. I mean, it's, it has grown. I remember it, it kind of really started. If I want to say like towards the end of my college career, which was mm -hmm. tell me if I'm like oh five ish, maybe. Is yeah, this... it was just neat because, again, because of I, I'm just I have a real heart for serving and philanthropy mm -hmm. and so forth. And um, and so I was just able to organize the, the, the start of it. And for, so I did it for about three years, mm -hmm. um, worked really closely with Jackie um, Martin Kennedy, who now totally run in that program. And mm -hmm. her and I signed up for the half marathon and the, and the full marathon together with mm -hmm. for St. Jude. And um, it's just a really um, I mean, the organization is is phenomenal mm -hmm. and so to be able to take cheerleading what i love to do and and integrate that into a great organization that's helping kids you know in these crazy you know life stages that they're in with cancer or whatever mm -hmm. that is was just like uh, it's just taking the two best things i love to do and putting them together mm -hmm. Um, so I, I'm going to pull this up because I mean, I'm jealous of people like you that, that can somehow do this stuff. And what I mean is like run marathons, oh. run marathons. <laughs> I, I hate running. I despise it. It hurts my I body. I hear that a lot. Yeah. It, it, so like <laughs> talk, I mean, you, you, you really, I, I, I'm jealous of people that can run marathons and you have run multiple kind of talk about how did you get the running bug? Like when did this start? And kind of what was, what was your first marathon? And what was that first idea of like, I want to run a marathon. I want to do Yeah, this. I never wanted to run a marathon. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I, I, it was after my, my second daughter. I was kind of like, I did a little bit of running, but before that, but honestly, not a lot. And then mm -hmm. it's kind of like, I was working from home, traveling a lot. The best way to get in shape is like, with a short amount of time, like I didn't have time to go to the gym with like, put on my shoes and just go out outdoors mm -hmm. for just, you know, 30 minutes. So just kind of mm -hmm. started like that of like getting back in shape after having kids. Mm -hmm. And then, then, you know, like anything, like also pretty competitive. So like, okay, well, I just go, I need to go a little faster. I need to go a little mm -hmm. further. Mm -hmm. Then I was like, I need a goal. Like I need yeah. something to attain to. So I signed up for a half marathon. Mm -hmm. You know, it was fine. Didn't think anything of it. Did it again the next year. Well, I had a friend who then did it and she's like, she got the bug and she's like, yeah. we need, we need to do a marathon. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I have no desire to ever yeah. do a marathon. Mm -hmm. No way. Compared, like the half marathon was like painful enough. Mm -hmm. And um, so I did one more and then I realized, okay, you know what? I'm probably going to do a marathon at some point in my life. Yep. I might as well just get it over with. Yep. And we decided to run for charity. So mm -hmm. it was for Mercy Ministries, which is okay. an organization that helps women that mm -hmm. need kind of like they're in multiple stages in their life 
mostly girls, but kind of like, like college age, mm-hmm. that whether it's drugs and alcohol or, you know, life stages that they mm-hmm. need some assistance. So they kind of work with them. So it's a local ministry here that, so we ran for them. I'm like, I'll okay. run for charity. I'll yeah. do it one time. Check the boxes, be done. Mm-hmm. Well, I had a great day and I qualified for Boston. And so that's a pretty good day. <laughs> it's a pretty good day. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm like, gosh, well, I have to do Boston, right? Uh-huh. You got to. Absolutely. I mean, that's like a dream. Mm-hmm. And so, again, it just kind of started this crazy cycle. Then I did Boston, then I qualified again. And then I just started this basically 10 years of doing at least probably like two marathons a year. So oh between goodness. New York and my first one was the California International Marathon. Uh-huh. And then I did Boston and, you know, and then again, um, New York and mm-hmm. kind of all across different areas. And I have... Um, I just did Chicago this last fall. Oh, very cool. And okay. Yeah. I did Boston and Chicago this last mm-hmm. year and I'm taking a break. Okay. So, 10 years of marathons and I, I ran this morning. I love still running, but I'm not going to do it's It's hard. I'm not, mm-hmm. I don't tell people to run them unless mm-hmm. you just really love it. Cause it's a lot of time and it's hard on your body. It's not for everybody. Uh, people I've talked to that, that are runner. It's an addiction. They say it, once you get it, it yeah. it's an addiction. Yeah. And, uh, well, I'm, je- little- I'm jealous of runners. Well, my poor girls, we went to Boston the first time and they're like real little and they're like, yeah. you know, mom, are you going to win? And I'm like, oh no, honey, like, <laughs> I'm so going to disappoint you because I'm not yeah. even close to ever, like ever. Yeah. Like I will yeah. never win a marathon, mm-hmm. like yeah. ever. And so, but that's the cool thing is, is that there's all these little, little, like, it's all about your personal, mm-hmm. like if you're personally yeah. competitive, it's like, yep. oh, you want to get like a little bit faster, yep. a little bit further. It's all, so that's why I think it's so addictive mm-hmm. is it's not about really who you're next to, it's yourself. The next picture that you sent me, which I thought was so cool, I had no idea, is this one. Oh, uh, that you were involved <laughs> in the making of the Wii Cheerleader video game, which is yeah. so cool. Talk about how did that happen? <laughs> Talk about Again, that story, yeah. Being, being in California, right? Yep. We, get, we do get access to a lot of exciting things, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, that, yeah, they called up and they, needed and again i was coaching sex state at the time okay uh west coast manager so some of those cheerleaders in there were were staff members mm-hmm. and sex state cheerleaders yep. and yeah that's i think tony nash and josh mccurdy there yeah um and so yeah super fun it uh, yeah i mean we're like literally this is like when it was like just all this little doodad you know i think mm-hmm. um the tom hanks movie um what's that christmas movie with the train whatever I'm totally thinking of the name. Anyways, that whole movie was shot with uh-huh. this kind of technology. And so it was kind of new at the time. Uh-huh. And um, so it was super, I mean, yeah, I looked at, we just kind of like, we can't believe like yeah. we were part of a video game somewhere. Yeah. I don't know. Like, like yeah. I got, like I got, I got this picture and that's why I said, I'm like, is that Tony and Josh? Like, is, <laughs> and is that Tony holding that, you know, and stuff? And so then if like, you know, Tony too, like getting him in, in that outfit was, I would pay money if you could have had a video of him getting in that costume. Yeah, I, that was, would have been, oh yeah. It was great. And, but I, I got like kind it. of mad. I'm like, I interviewed both those guys already and they didn't even mention this. And I'm like, of course not. <laughs> oh, you know, like, and I see IU cheerleading making a uh, uh, comment. So it might be Tony as IU cheerleading, but <laughs> yeah, exactly. IU cheerleading. I am not happy with Tony not mentioning this. So um, oh, I got lots of stuff of old pictures of lots of people that if you need it. Oh, that's good to know. I will <laughs> keep that in mind, Louie. Absolutely. A um, couple more pictures, which I was blown away with, with your, um, with your story is uh, the, the work you've done in Africa. Um, oh yeah. Thank please, you. So, please talk about that. And like, how did you get involved with that? And like exactly I, what, what is the mission over there for you? Yeah. So, I mean, I love, I love philanthropy. I love missions and so forth. So just from a very young age, I've always been involved, whether it's Mexico or I went to Romania um, once, and then I got involved, just always wanted to go to Africa. And so I mm-hmm. got involved with a local organization here in California that's called Heart mm-hmm. Health Education Africa Resource Team. Um, and prior to that, actually, though, our church was doing some work in Nigeria, which is okay. kind of kind of a hot spot. Can't mm-hmm. really go there right now. Mm-hmm. Probably barely should have gone there when I did. Mm-hmm. But um, my friend's a doctor, and so they were really they were building this hospital, and I wanted to go, and so her and I went together, just the two of us. And um, it was just 
I just fell in love with the country. Mm -hmm. And then I, I got involved with this organization, Heart, and I um, brought over a team of women, and we went over there and worked with the women. It's mm -hmm. pri primarily for women and children who have HIV, mm -hmm. who are either abandoned or their husband has, you know, they don't have family, their husband has passed away mm -hmm. um, or, or left them. Mm -hmm. And they really work with them to get them physically, spiritually, mentally, and economically, you know, to be able to, to sustain their, their own life. And mm -hmm. so... I've been over to Kenya four times, oh, brought wow. three different teams over there, mm -hmm. including both my girls. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, they are, they're the best people in the world. They're mm -hmm. just, I always leave more probably encouraged than I feel like that I'm there to help them. And they always end up helping me more, I think, but mm -hmm. incredible organization. I serve on their board. And so I've been to Cambodia um, once and I've also been to uh, Nicaragua and mm -hmm. things and just you know being able to figure out how just different ways of using the the resources that i can it was one of the one of the reasons why i stayed working is mm -hmm. i was like i, I want to be able to you know people have always helped and contributed towards fundraising for some of the trips i've gone on but i've spent a lot of my own money mm -hmm. as well and I, and I wanted to be able to, i want to be able to do that i mm -hmm. want to be able to to help that around the world uh one more picture here is that, yeah yes. that's in Cam Cambodia, that's that's Cambodia. An organization okay. yep. called aim and mm -hmm. they work with um uh sex trafficking wow okay and that was a really different trip mm -hmm. and it was really uh, impactful and they are doing amazing work over there mm -hmm. rescuing girls mm -hmm. so again i was a little nervous to go for a while just because i have two girls and i didn't know if i was really going to be like prepared for that kind of you know, exposure, mm -hmm. but I'm so glad I, I, I went mm -hmm. and um, would love to go back, but just so supportive of the work that they're mm -hmm. doing there. So basically what we're finding out here today, uh, Lori, is you're basically superwoman. You, you can do it all. <laughs> you're, you're, you're doing yeah. everything, but you know, as they say, usually behind a strong person is their family. And I know you wanted to talk about your family and, and you know, what, I mean, clearly you have a supportive family that, that you've been able to take this journey with you. Kind of, you know, talk about what you would like about, you know, your family and, and kind of like their journey with you through everything that you've been able to do. Well, I wouldn't be able to do everything I've done without their support, 100%. Um, and everyone, everyone always asks me, like, do your girls the cheer? Mm -hmm. No, nope. nope. neither one of them. <laughs> I never wanted to force them either way. I really didn't mm -hmm. care, but uh, they both grow up super active mm -hmm. in soccer. My, my one daughter soccer and volleyball, mm -hmm. and then my other daughter swimming and uh, theater. Mm -hmm. So that's been super fun. To it's actually helped me a lot with stunt because I've been able to be really involved with sports in mm -hmm. a different manner. And I've mm -hmm. loved like I always tell people I have so much cheer in my life. I don't yep. really need any more because. Mm -hmm. If they were on a team, I would have to go back into coaching, yeah. you know, and mm -hmm. I'd have to be involved. Mm -hmm. And so I actually love just going and being a part of what they're doing and not really, you know, being technically like an expert in mm -hmm. it. I just being a mom, you know, and just cheering them on and supporting them on what they love to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, I did put, put them in one little cheer camp to see mm -hmm. if they liked it. And mm, they just didn't really care for it. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. You know, they did gymnastics and dance and all mm -hmm. that stuff. And so, yeah, so to be able to have, I mean, they're all so supportive. I could never have worked and traveled without, you know, my husband being able to like, really be Mr. Mom mm -hmm. um, so often as well. So um, that's like so important to just be able to do what I love to do and be able to have everybody so, you know, mm -hmm. so supportive. And I mean, we talked about this last week, but kind of like the latest news for you, the latest journey um, through USA Cheer. Um, is the recommendation for stunt to become a emerging sport status NCAA sport again just you know uh, first of all I told you we'd talk for an hour because we're about five minutes away from an hour <laughs> yeah, I don't know how with, in <laughs> with Instagram live I told you Louie that we would make this happen but I mean talk about just how big of a step that is for stunt for college cheerleading athletes and kind of the next step for that it's um it's it's huge mm -hmm. you know i mean to be able to have a version of cheer that is recognized by the ncaa mm -hmm. as a collegiate opportunity for girls and at that that level is is just it's, it's a dream country for so many people mm -hmm. and just to be able to just offer again my i know as a as a parent, I want my girls involved in something all the time, you know, mm -hmm. and you want them, 
you want to expose them to yep. everything that you can to see mm -hmm. what they end up liking. And that's one thing about stunt, like especially at the high school level, it's, it's been so great to, I just love seeing it's a different version, mm -hmm. you know, and that is so great about it is you want it. Um, there's so many, it's not like you're sacrificing one discipline over another. Mm -hmm. There's just different opportunities and some people are going to love it. And some people, you know, are like, ah, it's not for me. I'm going to do this. I'm going to mm -hmm. do, do that. And so I just think the more that as, as advocates in the industry, in, um, in the industry, mm -hmm. as coaches, as adults and leaders, just for our, our students, we should be providing as many opportunities that people want, if they want to do it, we mm -hmm. should be providing opportunities for them to do it mm -hmm. because it's so important for kids to be involved in things. Mm -hmm. It's so important for them to understand discipline and teamwork and whether that's on the sideline at a cheer team, you know, a cheer team, if you're on a sports team, if it's on the stunt team, if it's at a pep rally interacting, you know, with alumni or the community, there's just, for me, cheerleading in particular has given me so many life lessons mm -hmm. that I just want to share that. And mm -hmm. I want to be a part of expanding that along with a ton of other people in the industry who are just, whether it's they own a gym, mm -hmm. whether it's a college coach, a high school coach, um, whether they're, you know, teaching cheer camps. And I mean, every, everybody, we just have, I just, it's just amazing what cheerleading has done in the U S and around the world. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I'm a big advocate of just kids and students being involved in something. Mm -hmm. It's better for their grades, better for their confidence, better for their morale. And so um, I applaud every coach, every adult, every person who has anything to do with getting their kids involved in stuff. Mm -hmm. And so this is just another opportunity for people who love the kids who love a version of, you know, the athletic skills of cheerleading to now put it in a sport format, mm -hmm. which is amazing. So the last question I'd like to ask all my guests is, uh, what is the one piece of advice or the first piece of advice that kind of pops in your head that, you, that sticks with you today that truly has helped you, you know, in your role as either a leader or a coach? What's kind of one, the one piece of advice that always just kind of sticks out to you when you're starting to make decisions? Well, I, gosh, I have a ton. Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> but to pick one, I have a lot of people who have just, again, believed in me and encouraged mm -hmm. me. And so again, that's probably one of the biggest ones is mm -hmm. get people around you who support you mm -hmm. and who can really push you to be better. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't, I always want to make sure I'm around like high level people mm -hmm. because of, cause they're, we're going to push each other. And I've mm -hmm. had the uh, luxury of being around some amazing mm -hmm. um, leaders and coworkers. So love that. But probably one thing I really, and if anyone who's worked, worked with me know, I say this a lot two things under promise over deliver, mm -hmm. you know, that's like a big one for me is just making sure that you're trying to go above and beyond when you can, but making sure that you're just really like exceeding people's expectations. But probably one of my best biggest things I would say that I, and I even did it this morning is I have a saying, a uh, divert daily mm -hmm. withdraw mm -hmm. weekly and abandon annually. Mm -hmm. And so it's so important for you and whatever you're doing, whether you're coaching, whether you're in business, whether you're, uh, you know, um, your family, your relationship with friends mm -hmm. is you, ha in order to give, you have to make sure that you're full, like you are, you know, you're taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And so that divert daily is 15 minutes, an hour, like find some time for yourself, whatever it is. Yes, for me, absolutely. it's like a little morning devotion and mm -hmm. a run, mm -hmm. you know, it clears my head, gets that kind of going. Um, which are all weekly, making sure you're taking, whether it's going to the movies or disconnecting, it's just disconnecting and finding time to fill yourself is mm -hmm. so, so important. Um, you know, for me working out and doing that kind of stuff kind of really keeps me going, but mm -hmm. you know, sometimes it's, whether it's reading a book or going out to a nice dinner, whatever it is, and then abandon annually. I take a trip every year to Cabo with my family. Mm -hmm. That's a rough one, but hey, not, gotta, it's do it all, <laughs> gotta do it annually. But I kind of do it over Thanksgiving. And that's kind of like the time of like really like trying to shut down for like a week. That's great. Like really like an abandon from like tech, tech, as much as possible technology um, just to really like recharge. Mm -hmm. And especially as Americans, we are mm -hmm. like, go, 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 go. Yes. My personality, I do better when I have like 
20 things going on mm -hmm. than if I have five. So yep. I'm always going to be like that. But I, in order to do that, I have to recharge. Mm -hmm. In order to be a better mom, you know, a better worker, mm -hmm. a better whatever, I need to make sure that I'm taking care of myself. So that's probably one of my biggest things mm -hmm. that someone had told me years ago. I think it was at our church, actually. Mm -hmm. And I just, like, wrote it down, and I, I have prescribed it. And anyone who has worked for me knows mm -hmm. I, I bring it up yearly. I'm like, make sure you are taking time for yourself. Work-life balance, Lori Harris. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, it's been an hour. I thank you again. I cannot wait till our paths cross. We can actually meet in person. Uh, I know. And, and say hi awesome. to each other. Yeah, stay safe, stay healthy out there. Thanks again, Lori. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Again, Lori Harris, USA Cheer. Awesome interview. A quick shout out to our sponsor, Cheer Chalk. Go to cheerchalk.us. Discount code FULLOUT10 to get an additional 10% off. Thank you all very much. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Have a great day.